Welcome to Module 2 of the Elliott Wave Vertical. This module is on impulsive patterns. By now, we have completed Module 1, Elliott Basics, and learned about Foundation of Elliott Wave Theory, Basic Wave Patterns, Wave Characteristics, Introduction to Mathematical Applications, The Three Essential Rules, and the Labeling of Waves. In this learning object, we will now break down the basics and focus on more specifics of the wave structures, starting with impulsive wave structures, impulse and diagonal wave characteristics, and the rules and guidelines of impulsive waves. I never did a day's work in my life. It was all fun, says Thomas A. Edison, inventor. Picture yourself learning all there is to know about impulsive patterns, so that high probability trades become apparent and have fun at the same time, just like Thomas Edison did. Elliott waves are fractal, with waves embedded within waves, within waves, within waves, etc. Waves of any degree in any series are made up of waves of a lesser degree. As such, this impulsive wave structure could easily be a 15-minute, hourly, daily, or weekly chart. The structure is the same in any time frame. Since waves are self-similar, this rising wave can be a wave 1, 3, or 5 in a 5-wave sequence. These are the impulsive waves which move in the direction of the trend. Each impulsive wave, once complete, is followed by a corrective wave. Now you are beginning to see the repetitive nature of the waves that Elliot first described when he looked at the stock market as a fractal. The complete 8-wave cycle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C, is really two waves of a larger degree. We can look at it another way as well. Looking at the sequence as waves 1 and 2, we can say that waves of any degree in any series always subdivide into waves of a lesser degree. Specifically, waves 1 and 2 of the daily chart will subdivide into waves of a lesser degree which can be seen on an hourly chart. In wave theory, this impulsive wave structure is called wave form. Whenever we look at wave form, we start with the larger time frame and count the basic five-wave impulse move followed by a three-wave corrective move, totaling eight waves. Moving to a shorter time frame, five waves turn into 21 waves, and three waves into 13 waves. One complete cycle has eight waves, and subdividing further, the next cycle has 34 waves, followed by 144 waves. There are three types of impulsive waves, impulse, the leading diagonal, and the ending diagonal. Impulses are the fundamental element of Elliott wave patterns and the most common of the impulsive wave structures. Impulses consist of five separate movements. Wave 1 in the direction of the predominant trend. Wave 2 as a retracement. Wave 3 as a strong movement in the direction of the predominant trend. Wave 4 as a retracement and wave 5 as a final move toward the direction of the predominant trend. Impulsive moves strongly in direction of trend. As a guideline, a rising impulse will start at or just after a major low. In a falling market, an inverted impulse will start at or just after a major high. This is an example of an impulse wave, the fundamental five-wave pattern. Note the three rules which cannot be broken, which we learned so far. 1. Wave 2 never retraces more than 100% of wave 1. 2. Wave 3 is never the shortest wave. And 3. Wave 4 does not enter into the same price territory as wave 1. There are two other impulsive Elliott wave patterns which move with the larger trend. They're called leading diagonals and ending diagonals. The diagonal wave structure is different from the impulse wave structure. While impulse patterns strongly move in the direction of the trend, diagonals move more weakly in the direction of the trend. 
Diagonals move within converging trend or channel lines. In impulse structures, one of the rules is that wave 4 can never move into the price territory of wave 1. Diagonals, in contrast, are a five-wave structure where wave 4 always moves into the price territory of wave 1. These diagonals are most common in highly leveraged markets, such as forex and commodities. Diagonal structures are also called diagonal triangles. Although similar, diagonal triangles are different from corrective triangles, which we will cover in Module 3, Corrective Patterns. Ending diagonals and leading diagonals have different characteristics and internal structures. Ending diagonals are more common than leading diagonals. The internal structure of an ending diagonal is comprised of all three wave or corrective patterns. That means that all of the waves of the fifth wave subdivide into three waves. Ending diagonals occur in the fifth wave position or in the C position in the ABC correction. In ending diagonals, wave 4 overlaps wave 1. Ending diagonals typically occur when the market is about to change direction. When it occurs in the wave 5 position, in higher degrees, a major reversal is about to take place. It slows down in anticipation of a change in direction. According to Elliott, it often occurs when the preceding move has gone too far too fast. And in classical technical analysis, an ending diagonal is known as a rising wedge. In the case of a downtrend, it is a falling wedge. The internal structure of a leading diagonal is comprised of 53535 subwaves. The five subwaves that make up a leading diagonal are a combination of impulse and corrective wave patterns. Leading diagonals occur in the first wave position or in the A position in an ABC correction. In leading diagonals, wave 4 also overlaps wave 1. Leading diagonals usually precede a deep correction or a retracement. Sometimes the diagonal triangle takes on an expanding shape rather than a wedge shape where the boundary lines diverge. In a wedge shape, the boundary lines converge. In addition to a diagonal fifth wave, the fifth wave may end in what is called a truncated wave 5. It is otherwise known as a failed fifth wave. This means that wave 5 fails to move beyond wave 3. The fifth wave still has the necessary 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 subwaves within a 5, 3, 5, 3, 5 internal structure, and the rules still apply. However, it is a short wave and usually signals a reversal pattern or a change in direction. In classical technical analysis, a truncated fifth is a double top formation. When the impulse wave seems to go on and on and on, it is called an extension. Extensions are elongated impulses with exaggerated subdivisions. Extensions can appear in any one of the three impulse waves, 1, 3, or 5. However, wave 3 extensions are the most common since it is usually the strongest and the longest impulse wave of the three. In this example, the third wave extension is a nine-wave sequence. Within this five-wave sequence, Wave 3 extends into another 5-wave sequence. In this example, the third wave has two extensions. This is known as a third wave extension of a third wave extension. In other words, the extension occurs within an extension. This extension is a 13-wave sequence. Within the initial 5-wave sequence, Wave 3 extends twice. Notice that none of the three Elliott Wave rules have been broken. Notice, too, that in the 13-wave sequence, we have a series of 1-2 patterns. Specifically, we have a 1-2, 1-2, 1-2 pattern before continuing on. Now the next question is, if Wave 3 is extended, what does that tell you about the length of Wave 5? I can hear you saying that it won't be extended, and that is the correct answer. Now, let's look at Wave 1 and Wave 5 extensions. Waves 1 and 5 extensions also occur in the form of 9-wave and 13-wave sequences as well. This example shows 9-wave sequences for the Wave 1, 
and Wave 5 extension. If Wave 1 is extended, it is likely that Waves 3 and 5 will not be extended. And if Wave 5 is extended, it is likely that Waves 1 and 3 were not extended. In this example, waves 1 and 5 extensions occur as 13 wave sequences. The first example is a first wave extension of a first wave extension. Note how the 5 wave sequence seems to go on and on. The second example is a fifth wave extension of a fifth wave extension. Wave 5 seems to go on and on. It is important to understand extensions so as not to call the end of a five-wave sequence prematurely. This is an example of a wave extension in the EURUSD hourly chart from June 5, 2006 to June 14, 2006. This is a five-wave sequence that appears to go on and on. When we look at it more closely, we see it as a series of extensions. In fact, we notice that it is a third wave extension of a third wave extension with 13 subwaves. While one is trading this sequence, it is often difficult to recognize the end of a five wave sequence, especially if we are in extension mode. We will learn ways to recognize the end of a trend further on in this course. In this EURUSD hourly chart from July 7, 2006 to July 19, 2006, you can see the third wave extension of the third wave extension. This is an example of a diagonal wave structure in the Euro US dollar daily chart in 2006. This is an example of a leading diagonal triangle, an expanding triangle as well. You can see the boundary lines diverge and you can see the overlap between the wave 1 top and the wave 4 bottom. Here is an example of an ending diagonal triangle in the weekly US dollar Canada from August 2002 to May 2007. Notice that all of the legs appear to be three waves. Wave 3 is not the shortest wave. Wave 4 overlaps the end of wave 1. The ending diagonal, although not complete at this time, will likely signal the trend reversal in the US dollar Canada. Notice also the boundary lines converge as well. And now for some rules and guidelines of impulse wave structures. There are rules and there are guidelines. First the rules. 1. Impulse waves 1, 3, and 5 always subdivide into 5 waves. 2. Wave 1 must be an impulse or a leading diagonal pattern. 3. Wave 2 never goes beyond the start of wave 1. 4. Wave 3 is never the shortest impulse wave. 5. Wave 3 must be an impulse. 6. Wave 4 never moves beyond the end of wave 1. 7. Wave 5 must be an impulse or an ending diagonal pattern. And 8. Waves 1, 3, and 5 can never all be extended. And now for some guidelines. 1. Sometimes wave 5 does not move beyond the end of wave 3. This is called truncation. 2. Wave 5 often ends or slightly exceeds a trend line drawn off wave 3 parallel to a trend line drawn connecting the ends of waves 2 and 4. 3. Wave 1, 3, or 5 is usually extended, where the corrective waves are small compared to the impulse waves. 4. Wave 3 is usually the steepest and longest wave. 5. Usually either wave 3 or 5 is extended. 6. Wave 4 usually ends in the vicinity of sub-wave 4 of wave 3. 7. Fibonacci percentages are used to calculate the retracements for waves 2 and 4. And 8. Fibonacci ratios are used to target the end of waves 3 and 5. And now for the rules and guidelines of diagonal waves. First the rules. 1. A diagonal triangle subdivides into 5 waves. 2. A leading diagonal occurs in wave 1 of an impulse 
or wave A of an ABC correction. 3. An ending diagonal always subdivides into three waves for each leg of the five-wave sequence. 4. An ending diagonal occurs in wave 5 of an impulse, or wave C, of an ABC correction. 5. Wave 2 never goes beyond the origin of wave 1. 6. Wave 3 always goes beyond the end of wave 1. 7. Waves 4 and 1 overlap. 8. Wave 5 always ends beyond the end of wave 3 in a leading diagonal. 9. In a contracting diagonal, waves 1, 3, and 5, and waves 2 and 4 decrease in size consecutively. And 10. In an expanding diagonal, waves 1, 3, and 5, and waves 2 and 4 increase in size consecutively. And now for the guidelines. 1. A leading diagonal usually subdivides into 5, 3, 5, 3, 5 for waves 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and sometimes subdivides into 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 corrective patterns. 2. If wave 1 is a leading diagonal triangle, then wave 3 is usually extended. 3. If wave 5 is an ending diagonal triangle, then wave 3 is usually extended. 4. A contracting diagonal can have a failed fifth wave. 5. In a contracting diagonal, wave 5 usually ends at or slightly beyond throwover, a trend line that connects the ends of waves 1 and 3. And 6. In an expanding diagonal, wave 5 usually ends slightly before the trend line that connects the ends of waves 1 and 3. This is the conclusion of the learning objects. Please continue on to the quiz.